Welcome to Excel with Mark. I'm Mark, and today what we're going to be looking at is how we can use drop down menus within an invoice to automatically populate all the different rows that we want to for our customer information below. So let's get into this and let's have a look straight away. What we don't want to be doing is every time typing out the customer address when we're inputting this information into our invoice. What we want to be able to do is just have a drop down list of all our different customers which will then automatically import their address within to our invoice. First of all, what we're going to need for this then is a list of customers. And once we have the list of customers, we're then going to need all the relevant column headings to do this. Once we have this, we're then going to need to put all the customer details underneath this. We're then going to need to put all of this information with an Excel table. So the way that we can do is to click anywhere within our data, and then we can go up to the ribbon, click on insert, and then click table. Or if you want to use the keyboard shortcut, you can press the control and T. Once we get to this point, we need to tell Excel that we have headers within our table. We now need to name our table within Excel. So we need to make sure that we've clicked within our table, go to the table design tab that we can see up at the top here. And then we're going to go across to the table name and we're just going to call this customers. We're going to take the customers names and we're going to just make them into a separate list. So the way we can do this is press the equal sign in a blank cell. So I'm going to come over here to column I. I'm going to press equals. I'm then going to select all of the rows within the customer name column. And we can see here that we have both the table name and also the column name within this. And once we've got this, then we can just press enter. And that's going to then return all of our customer names for us. We're going to go and we're going to select the cells there. And we need to go to the formulas tab. Once we've gone to the formulas tab, we can then click on the define name and we need to define the name of these cells that we've just created. For me, I'm just going to call this one customer underscore drop down and we can't have spaces in that, but we can have underscores. So if you want to make it a slightly longer name, then you might want to think about using the underscore option. And what we need to do now is the original reference that we had before where we had the equals and then the name of the table that we had. So customers and then the customers names that we had for the columns. We need to copy that into the reference to part of the Excel pop out. Once we've done that, we can click OK and then we can go back to the template sheet that we originally created. We can select the cell where we want the drop down to appear. We're then going to need to go up to the data and go into data validation at this point. On the settings tab, we can see that we get different options and we're going to go down to the list option. We could press the F3 option and we can see now that we get different names pop up and we can see that we have the customer drop down list that we created before already show up there for us. We're going to select this, click OK, and now we should see that that shows up in the source. And once this is done, we're then going to go down and click OK. This should have now created the drop down list for you of all the different customer names that you had on the other sheet. Now, because we already have our customer names within the table, if we were to go and now add a new customer name onto the other sheet, then this should automatically input the new customer name within our drop down list for us. Once we get to this point here, we can see that we have all the list of the customers that we have, and we would now want to start auto populating down into our address boxes that we have. And what we're going to do for this part here is we're going to use the VLOOKUP function. So we're going to have all this data here and we're going to start out by using the VLOOKUP function. You can see here that our value that we want to use is going to be what is in our drop down list in the cell above. The table array that we're looking for is going to be over onto the table on the other sheet that we have. And then the column is going to respond to the respective column or header, depending on what you've done within your respective table. As we have already named the table, we can see that this shows up for the data array here. We can see that because we've already named the table, it shows up in the table array. And what we can do now is just have a quick look onto the other sheet as we look for the column index number. And we just need to reference which part of the address we want to come onto each particular line. If we want to return the first line of the address, we can see that this is going to be the second column within our table. So we can put a two in there. And we also want it to be an exact match. So we're going to put in false there. Now what you should be able to see is a quick example is if you were to go to the drop down part of this and just quickly change the name of the customer, then you should see the first line of this change. 
as it's just pulling in that information that's relevant within the VLOOKUP formula that we've already inputted below. At this point, we have the option to automatically, or we have the option to just pull this down and redo the Excel function as we move down, dependent on the columns that we want to do. So as we move down, we would move to column two, column three, column four, and so on. But we don't want to do that. We want to make this automatic again, and so that we're not having to kind of redo ourselves and redo formulas every time. What we can do now then, rather than just putting input in column two, we can change this part here to row, and we can just select a blank kind of part up here, and we can see that once we've put in the row part, we're just gonna select column A2 here. And as we drag this down then, it's gonna drag down and work in the A2 to A3 and so on and so on for the other parts when we move forward with this. But one thing that we do need to make sure that we lock in as we drag this down is the B10, because obviously if we're just dragging this down, then the B10 would also change and it becomes say B11, B12, B13. So, we just need to make sure that we have that locked in too. We can quickly do this just by pressing F4 on our keyboard. So at this point then what we're able to do now is just quickly drag this down and we should be able to see now that we get the rest of the address information that we're currently looking for and it should auto populate for them. And if we change the name within the drop down list again, this should auto populate for us, changing over the relevant information for us. If we have an example here, like we do on the third customer, where we have a blank row within our information or a blank column for any particular part, then we can see here that when we change the drop down menu, it's going to return a zero for us. And obviously, this is something that we don't want to return. So, what we can do here is just select the information where we get the return from the VLOOKUP. And we're just going to format the cells here. Once we do this, we're going to go to the custom part. And within this part here, we're going to type in a semicolon and just click on OK. And what this is going to do is just get rid of any numeric values that it would return normally. And if it's just a zero, then we can see that it's just going to get rid of it, leaving us the blank space that we want and making things look a little bit neater. Thanks for watching then. Hopefully you found some of this information interesting. If you did, don't forget to leave a like down below. If you're looking to learn Excel skills, then I have a free course on Udemy. So hopefully that's something that would interest you and something that you might particularly like to have a look at. And if not, we'll hope to see you again for some more tutorials and we hope you have a good day.